You're listening to the Full Core Press with your host, Drew Duncan. Don't you dare touch that dial. to the Full Court Press. I am your host, Drew Duncan. You're checking me out live from the K-Sun Studios in Wichita, Kansas. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at DrewDuncan83. And don't forget, you can listen to KSUNRadio.org. That's KSUNRadio.org, Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. And listen to me live because, honestly, I don't put up every segment that I do. It's a full two-hour show. So, usually you get one or two segments during the week. Well, during the day, I should say. I actually put up. Then, of course, on Friday, I usually do Facebook Friday, so I'm live on Facebook. So sometimes I don't even put one up on the podcast on Friday. You just got to be ready. College football weekend. Well, I'm telling you what, Saturday was, it looked like we were starting to separate the men from the boys, didn't it? Penn State with a dominating win. They just looked phenomenal. Barkley, those guys, they just look like, a damn good football team. Notre Dame all over USC, which honestly, I saw that coming. So I'm probably not going to get too much into that because I, I'm i still not a big fan of Notre Dame football right now. And I'm I'm not a very big fan of the schedule going forward. I, I already said that I felt like every Pac-12 team in the country, and I've said this at nauseum, so if you haven't picked it up, this is your last chance is going to lose at least two games this season and there won't be a Pac-12 team in the college football playoff. You know, when I thought about how I was going to break down this segment, I started looking at it and I thought, should I lump a couple of games in together or should I just focus in on basically two teams, Alabama and Penn State? Penn State fans want Alabama, but we've heard this chant many a times over the years. Nine times out of ten, if you want Bama, believe me when I tell you, Nick Saban and company, they are going to give you all that you want and more, buddy. So before you start yelling, we want Bama, you got to make sure all your ducks in a row. What are your ducks in a row? Well, number one, defensively up front, you better be a damn good football team. You have to make sure that you have the ability to stop the run. You better learn and know that you're going to have to be physical for a full four quarters of football because that meat locker that's up front for the Alabama Crimson Tide will beat you up, push you around, smack you, make you beg for mercy, and then keep pummeling you. What's duck number two? Well, you better have a quarterback that can take a pounding because the defensive line for the Alabama Crimson Tide We'll do exactly what I just forementioned for the offensive side of the football. The difference is they're more like a pack of hungry wolves. Yeah, they look in the backfield. They see that quarterback. Their eyes light up. They get bloodshot red. And they can't help but attack. It's all they really know. They stop the run, which is number three. You better have a running back that is capable of running inside. And once he gets to that second level, if he's lucky enough to do so, he better know how to break tackles and protect the football because one thing that Alabama loves to do when you get up to the second level is strip that ball out of your hands, especially if they find you creeping up on the sideline and they know they can just kind of nudge you out if worse comes to worse. I will say this. If there's any running back in college football that could compete with the Alabama Crimson Tide, it is Barkley for the Penn State Nittany Lions. They're not a football team that just lines him up one way. They use him in a lot of different ways. You're looking at the closest thing to a Chip Kelly offense that there honestly has been for a while now in college football with the way that they use their running backs and the way that they do their motions. Alabama could be in for it with Barkley. And I love Trace McSorley, quarterback for the Penn State and any Lions. And the times when Barkley hasn't had the greatest game in the world, he's been able to step up and throw for 300 yards. So we know that that Trace McSorley is good enough 
that if he needs to, he can beat you, not only with his arm, but we saw it with his legs against Michigan as well. By the way, statistically, Michigan, still one of the top defenses. We're talking top five in all college football. What's a unique piece of the puzzle, though, that you're going to need in order to compete with the Alabama Crimson Tide? Well, I think you need a wide receiver that can be physical, get to the inside, and use his speed as well. And I think that Penn State has that in Deshaun Hamilton. Though his stats don't necessarily reflect an elite wide receiver, I think he's good enough to get you to where you want to go. Again, they use Barkley a lot like a receiver. And I'm telling you right now, defensively, they've got a pretty stacked football team themselves. Farmer, Cabandina, Allen, Bowen, they're a good football team. But do they want the Alabama Crimson Tide? See, that's the question. When you wake up in the morning, do you know that you can compete with Alabama? When you wake up in the morning, do you feel like if you were to play against the Crimson Tide that you can stick in there? You know, Alabama, finally, somebody dominates Tennessee, and, uh, you know, they were the team to do it, 45-7. to They were living in the backfield. They never gave anybody an opportunity. And, by the way, their quarterback, Jarrett, which I never say this guy's right, name right, so I'm just going to not even try, had a horrendous football game, 9 out of 16 passing for 44 yards, and the team as a whole ran for 64 yards. By the way, JG is what we'll call him, was just living on the ground. And that's what I mean when I say when you play Alabama, you better damn well know that you're a tough guy. You've got to take some shots back there because they're going to get to the quarterback. Ask Deshaun Watson. It doesn't matter how good you are. Eventually, they're going to lay the lumber to you. When they smack you in the mouth, are you man enough to get back up and take another one and another one and another one? Look, if there's a football team out there that could compete with Alabama right now, I really believe it's Penn State. Wisconsin is a very physical football team as well. They run the football, but we've already seen a team like them a couple of years ago in the college football playoff in Michigan State. And Alabama knew how to take care of a football team that was pretty much one-dimensional, and the passing game was really non-existent. Wisconsin, that Michigan State team, you're looking at almost identical teams. And Wisconsin, for the most part, hasn't been good until the fourth quarter in most games. Against Alabama, you don't get to wait till the fourth quarter. You got to play a full four quarters with those guys. Ask Ole Miss about it a couple years ago. Yeah, Alabama took that beat down, but they came back in the fourth quarter. They damn near, it was like a 30-point lead that Ole Miss had that they almost blew in the fourth quarter. So I don't think Wisconsin can compete. Look, I damn sure don't think there's anybody out of the Pac-12 that can. USC went to double overtime with Texas. Texas is a 4-3 and football team that lost to Maryland pretty bad. I know the final score was only a 10-point loss, but if you actually watch that game, defensively, they got made fun of by Maryland. I don't know that I like Georgia to be able to compete with Alabama in the SEC championship. I don't know that they're physical enough. I I know that they've got a running back that everybody loves that's been there for 100 years, but that's neither here nor there. Plus, you're in the SEC East, and your toughest team over there is probably Florida. So I'm going to say no to that. TCU defensively, I think that they could compete with Alabama. Matter of fact, I think TCU can compete with anybody defensively in the country. But Kenny Hill's a guy, a quarterback, who just turns the football over way too much. So, no, I don't think that TCU would compete with Alabama because I think eventually the turnovers would get the better of TCU, and you can only keep anybody that's – as good as Bama is offensively with the balance that they have, a quarterback, running back, pounding you, you're only going to keep them out of the end zone for so long. 
even one of the better defenses in the country last year and Clemson gave up a lot of points. Matter of fact, the last two years gave up quite a bit to Alabama. I mean, who else do you really think can compete with the Crimson Tide in this moment? A lot of people were talking about Washington and Washington State being physical. Well, I didn't see that at all against Arizona State and Cal. I really, truly believe that the only team that has any kind of chance to compete with the Alabama Crimson Tide are the Penn State and any Lions. And I've seen probably three or four games from last year, and I've seen probably three or four games this year. It's the revenge tour. They're a focused football team. And you got to give it up to their head coach because I'm telling you what, to keep people focused after being the Big Ten champ and a lot of people saying, why aren't they in? Well, they weren't in because they lost 49-10 to to Michigan. That's why. Now you're in because you just won 42-13 to over Michigan. That would be why, if you're now the Big Ten champ. Who do you compete with in the Big Ten? Well, you've still got Wisconsin, obviously. You've got Ohio State, obviously. Those are the teams right now that you will look at. And honestly, I think out of those teams, the better or tougher competition would be Ohio State. Urban Meyer is very good in the second half of any season. None of the schedules for either one of these teams in the Big Ten gets easier now. Obviously, with Ohio State, you're still going to have Michigan. I I think that that could be somewhat a revenge game for the Wolverines. And I did point out, even though I don't think it'll happen, I did point out that I thought if Michigan had a chance, it was going to be against Penn State. Now that Penn State's blown them out of the water, do you really think that Michigan's going to be able to compete with Ohio State? The Big Ten is going to be very interesting when all is said and done. Because it looks to me like one of those guys is going to get out of there as Big Ten champ with one loss. And TCU make it out of the Big 12 undefeated. That's going to be the issue because I feel like if something goes bad, and Penn State or somebody like that does happen to slip up and lose, somebody's going to get in that doesn't deserve to be there. But I think right now the Big Ten is Penn State's to lose, to be perfectly honest with you. This is the best that I've seen them play probably since 2005 or so. If I remember correctly, they were a really good football team. It was right around that time frame. And they played Florida State, and I think it was the Orange Bowl. Am I right about this? I have to to double check it. But this is probably the best that I've seen them play since then. And I think the difference is the quarterback is actually a guy who can get it upfield. Now, I will say this. McSorley floats a lot of passes, and if there's any negative to his game, that would be it. The way he floats that ball in the air sometimes, man. This is the Full Court Press. I am your host, Drew Duncan, and checking me out live from the K-Sun Studios in Wichita, Kansas. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at Drew Duncan 83 Don't forget, you can listen to KSUNradio.org. That's KSUNradio.org. We're going to take a quick sponsor break. When we come back on the flip side, there is a lot more to get to. Hoodie Mellow's in effect, but it doesn't quite work out for him. We've got the Monday night game to discuss. We've got more college football to talk about. We've got more basketball to talk about. Obviously, the charity event between the Jayhawks and the Tigers, pretty awesome deal. We're going to be discussing that as well. We'll be back right after this. Don't you dare touch that dial.